go take a very broad idea and narrow it down, and then do the research whether it exists, whether it's done correctly, whether it's done well, and then you <clears throat> see if it's feasible, and then you basically kind of print it and repeat. Just like go broad, narrow it down, see if it works, narrow it down further until you have like a decent idea which is feasible, um, implementable, um, and also while well, also being interesting. Okay, so um, this is kind of like an activity we did as staff to come up with ideas and see if this Beyond the Horizon thing would actually work. So before that, um, let's do a quick um, ideation workshop, so, sort of. So everyone go to go.6148.io slash ideation to start it. Uh, Ashish, can you start it? Um, you have three minutes, just keep submitting ideas. It can be really bad, it can be decent, but when you, we have like all, almost like 100 people in the classroom, it, uh, we can get a lot of good stats on this. Yeah. Okay. Okay guys, good job. We crashed the website. <laughs> okay, we have a, like a good solid minute and a half of quote unquote brainstorming. So um, we'll come back to you with the results on whatever you guys ended up submitting tomorrow morning. I'm kind of being worried of what I'll have to go through tonight to sort those, but okay. So, we had an idea, it's really simple. Discover new places and go out of your comfort zone to explore new places. So this is our uh, staff idea. So, yeah, we have a problem here. It's too broad, it's really, really broad. Discover new places, like, it's as broad as you can get, right? So, we're like, okay, let's narrow down the scope. So, we talk about discover new places. So then you can think about the target audience. Who are you like trying to make the? Uh, who is your? Who's going to be using your apps? So it can be like college students, us all, maybe tourists. If you're touring a place and you want to discover a very unique place, then perhaps. Or real life people, like basically people who have salaries. Um, like, you can have more, but we just stopped here. And we just, just we were like, okay, let's, for example, pick touring. Let's make an app for tourists. So, and then we thought about what could be potential features and use cases that would make this app perhaps somewhat interesting. So, if you look at it, you have, like, um, directing what type of places uh, the user might want to visit, maybe like tell them, oh, you can visit these type of places around your area. Or maybe you can be like, okay, let's propose a route from point A to point B, which would give them a new user experience, perhaps. Just use Google Maps and draw different routes and see if it gives you anything. And perhaps it, you can also keep a history of where you visited and make that be used in your future explorations. I don't know, perhaps. And uh, something like this. And you can also like be like make recommendations, which is a very popular feature that people think about, but often is not really feasible with the amount of resources that are actually available to us. But um, now that we have like a fairly decently large list of potential features. Some of these might actually be like completely bonkers, not going to work, or we won't be able to implement it within the time frame for the project, or maybe it's just completely done. And then next we have um, an assessment of scope and feasibility. Basically what I just said. Um, so examples would be giving recommendations um, oftentimes, you either have to make some kind of learning algorithm that like works as the logic to make these decisions, 
which is oftentimes not going to be your focus because you are trying, y'all are trying to make a web application work, and when you have like some other complicated component that you're also trying to make work, uh, work it's not going to be like a good allocation of your time, given you have only have like three, four weeks to develop. Actually, three weeks minus the first week because you guys are just learning everything, etc. And then um, also like things like let's scrape the internet for famous landmarks, interesting places, etc. But the problem with that comes with like scraping and parsing results is oftentimes a fairly like non-trivial task. So and then um, after gauging like feasibility of some ideas, you can also think about the scope of your project. So um, also, you can also ask what types of uniqueness are you looking for? Um, are you looking for uniqueness in the sense that you want uh, uniqueness in, in terms of experiences, which is, I would say, like, not a very simple thing to model? Or you can maybe just say, like, does this route, like, let's say we are, we're talking about a route from point A to point B and you want to make it quote unquote unique. Do, do, does it have a, like, let's say like, public transport section? Maybe that's an interesting to, thing to see. Maybe you want the user to experience a route in which they travel through different modes of transportation to make them get a feel of the city. And it, is, it, is, it can be something as very specific as such or like, um, make it very broad in terms of, oh, did they, did they get a five-star rating on our user base? Something like that. And you can also think about, is it possible to get a realistic traversable route? And if you're like in a city and the route you get recommended is like a back alley, that's probably not something you want to recommend to your users. And finally, the other thing you should think about is a quote unquote killer feature. So you want your app to have some sort of feature that is different from everybody else, but at the same time that also goes back to the problem of finding unique things in the car. But you have to show and like to like in your web applications you have to attempt something ambitious, but um, within like re realistic limits, so to speak. So like you should think about making a non-trivial function that would be very interesting to see in action. And uh, examples would this be like maybe you want you can like implement a really like cool matching algorithm, I don't know. Or maybe you can use very good use of your user base and um, use your user's data to make your cont uh, the interactions in your website more interesting. Um, or maybe you can just implement some sort of social feature where people can interact with uh, each other with their experiences and comments or whatever else. This nebulous stuff, that's fine. And finally, you kind of are able to then narrow down the ideas you can think of. So an example is uh, one of the, after like all these different options we thought of, we had like several combinations which sort of made sense. Um, tour routes generated for varying budgets. So you input the amount of budget you have and it like spits out a route from some point to another point and hopes you have a good time. It's feasible, and, um, perhaps it's impactful, and the team was mostly interested in pursuing what, like, how we could make this web app and see the results. But then you can also have like something really, really ambitious, like procedurally generating routes and offering like new experiences. The new is like kind of nebulous in this situation, but you can also like make new, define it as okay. Let's say your user has some sort of history of places they, types of places they visit, and then you kind of like generate new things. But the problem with this is it's not really that easy to implement. I mean, it is possible, and if you're actually in the industry, you might actually try to see if you can pull off something like this. But for the scope of everyone here, it's like fairly not feasible because you're trying to procedurally generate things. But at the same time, 
Why not? Maybe there's some killer API out there which you can just plug and play and everything works. Um, so it's perhaps worth exploring, but not most of the time worth your time. And the last one is just there to prove a point that you can have a very feasible thing that nobody's really interested in or is going to have any impact. So this example I just demonstrated in the past five or seven minutes is fairly contrived. Um, the staff came up with this probably like within like five to seven minutes um, in hurry to make this uh, lecture like, on time. But um, the proof of like you, you can like go off with this model and basically get an idea narrow it down, do the research and see if it's possible, and rinse and repeat basically, until you get several ideas which you would um, be able to choose as possible contenders for your final idea, and then pick amongst those, and you have it. So um, your milestone zero will be a lot about uh, getting ideas like, or, or, like in the scope of Okay, I have this idea and it is fairly implementable and we, we want to hear your feedback as like feedback from staff on what you think about it. Perhaps you did not uh, see some details that you might have um, overlooked on like feasibility or maybe impact. Maybe it's too simple and you don't really want to like make a web that's uh, that's boring. Um, so milestone zero, uh, we will be posting the assignment officially probably <coughs> this evening. Um, it will be on making 10 of these ideas and asking for your favorite top three for feedback because 10 ideas for each team and we have almost like 40 teams 400 ideas to go through all of them as seven people is kind of hard, so we are asking you to ask for feedback for the top three you like. But it's important that you get all 10 down on paper just so that you have the choice of choosing the best three uh, rather than just barely making three. Okay. Back, back to the lecture. So once you have an idea, it's very um, important to have like kind of like a vision of what you want your web application to look like and having your entire team mostly on the same page. And the reason for that is if obviously your teammates are not thinking of the same thing, you might like unconsciously make some design decisions which would contradict the two teammates, in which case you're going to have a fair bit, bit of a trouble putting your work together. So a wireframe is a really good way to see, like, um, like a, like talk to your teammates and uh, like decide on a design, and b present it to people, which is basically a staff and the sponsors, and get feedback on the specific designs you end up going with. So. Um, if you want to look at wireframe tools, the most simple one would be pencil and paper. Just draw it on a piece of paper of what your website will look like. So something like this, perhaps. So you kind of be like, okay, so this website in the top, we can have a navigation bar. Um, we'll have like this control panel on the left, info on the right. News feed scrolling down on the uh, in the center, whatever. But um, once you have this, you can kind of like even like emulate how like browsing your website would feel like. So like if you have a drawing, let's say, you can have like notes, perhaps uh, discussing like what are the possible interactions. Um, uh, perhaps like make several wireframes describing where one view, like one of these web pages will go to a different one, etc. Just very simple things. Um, 
these three applications are just three applications that I copied down from last year's lecture because I have no idea how these things work. But, um, if you're interested, um, go ahead, look at these. Um, um, one good thing about using these applications is they oftentimes have like the very common buttons that you very often use, like, yeah, buttons. And also, it can be like for like designers, especially like iterating over your wireframe and trying out new designs and seeing what works and what doesn't is often like a good thing to try out. And finally, another thing you can use to model your um, the logic of your website is maybe try drawing a flowchart and see like okay. Um, I have a user, he input, he, she inputs some sort of data into the input and submits it. And what's my server going to do? It's going to do computation one, computation two, um, store this, and then return this, and if something else happens, blah, 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 and in the end, you're just going to... Never mind. Okay, so yeah, um, that's it for ideation and wireframing. It's a fairly lightweight lecture. Next up, we have web design, UI, UX, and designing for the user for Yolanda. Yay!